I'm going to cover a problem which a number of students have given to me over the past few years that they've come across and have wanted to know how you solve it. And it's all about a cylinder that either rolls or slides down an incline plane. Okay, so let's just think about what we have first. Uh, it's got a cylinder, it's got its weight and G, and so it starts a height above where it will roll or slide to. And the radius as well. That's the radius of the cylinder itself. Now, we can actually solve the problem, which one, the, the general problem, whether it will, uh, which will, rock, will reach the bottom first. Rolling or sliding. So that question, the, the key idea here is that if the cylinder were to slide down, then its GPE will be converted into kinetic energy. That's linear kinetic energy. So when it reaches the bottom, it's going to have velocity of speed and uh, associated with that half mv squared. If, however, it were rolling, well, it takes energy to get something rolling, or a rolling object has energy, so therefore that energy had to come from somewhere. Well, if we're just letting it go from being stationary, not rolling, not moving down the slope, then that energy comes from the GPE. So, if it's uh, rolling, then the GPE is converted into the linear kinetic energy plus the rotating kinetic energy. So it has rotational kinetic energy. Therefore, some of the energy that could potentially have been converted into linear kinetic energy will be converted into the rotational instead, meaning this is smaller. So if it's got a smaller velocity at the end of it, surely it will have taken longer to get there. So that's the general problem. Okay. What about showing it mathematically by comparing the velocities? Well, we can do that as well. So let's consider our problem in two parts. Firstly, if the cylinder were to slide. So this is the do it over here, sliding. Potential energy is equal to the final kinetic energy. It's linear. So MGH, we'll get to the mass of M, it's H above our reference point here, that we call half M V squared. So V being the linear velocity that the object has at the bottom. M's cancel out. So then V is equal to square root of 2gh. That's our first equation. That tells us about the velocity if the object were to slide down. And that actually, incidentally is a very common equation in mechanics. It keeps coming up. So there's nothing majorly new there. the rolling side of things. One of the reasons that universities like to ask this question is because rotational kinetic energy is not on the physics specification at A level. So <clears throat> it's one of those, or the maths, in, in, it's not a norm of the 
basic modules that are covered in the maths A level. So that's one of the reasons they like to ask it, I think, so that they're seeing if you've gone beyond the specification a little. Okay, rolling then. We've got our conservation of energy equation, which is So that's the linear component of the kinetic energy, that's the rotational component. Um, now, the rotational kinetic energy has a similar form to the linear one, and what it is equal to is a half I omega squared. Now the terms here, that's the moment of inertia. That talks about, mass talks about how hard it is to accelerate something with a force. This is, talks, talks about an object's resistance to being rotated. And this is the angular velocity. We're familiar with that term, but not with this term. And if we have a cylinder, just need to read, find what the moment of inertia for a cylinder is from a reference book and it's a half m r squared and that's the object, the cylinder's radius which is up here so I've put a capital R in there a half m r squared and remember that angular velocity v over r but again, that R is the radius of the cylinder there. So we can now substitute these into this equation and simplify that. Let's, we'll do that first and then we'll put that all into this equation here. So, up here, half I omega squared is equal to half times half m r squared, that's that one there, and this times v over r, all squared, because the omega is squared there. Get then, oh, let's just write it as an equal A half times half gives us a quarter. We've got the mass, can't get rid of that. This is an R squared, this is also an R squared, so those, those will cancel out, and we're left with B squared. A quarter MB squared. Let's just write that, and that's the rotational kinetic energy. Right, now we can substitute this into our equation here. So, conservation of energy. MGH gets turned into a half MB squared plus a quarter MB squared. We've got half and a quarter, so that is three quarters MB squared. And the mass is cancelled out. So then the velocity of the object at the bottom will be equal to square root of four thirds g h okay, so that's our second equation <coughs> so let's compare our equations then the velocity here of the object will be equal to square root of two g h the velocity over here is the square root of 4 thirds gh. Well, you can see that this term, 1 and a third, is less than this term, 2. So therefore, this velocity is going to be less than this velocity here. And therefore, when it, if it rolls, it will have a smaller velocity at the bottom. Conversely, if the maximum velocity is less, then it will have taken longer to, to roll down the slope than to slide down. And that is the solution to the problem.